Hey there, home lovers and real estate connoisseurs. Welcome or welcome back to my channel. Have you ever found yourself wondering, self, I wonder what the home trends are for 2021. Well, if you have, you're in luck because that's what we're going to jump into today and take a look at. So we're looking at things from paint colors, the colors of the year, um, flooring trends, interior decoration trends, things, all of that, all of that good stuff. And there are, I know there are a million articles about trends, so I took kind of the ones that everyone's talking about and put them all together into this nice little video for you guys, kind of packaged it up. So if you're ready, let's go take a look. So trends, let's define trends real quick first. Trend, a, a trend is not something that is brand new. It's really hard to find something that has just never, ever been done before because, you know, most things have been done somewhere along the line in pretty much every industry. So what we're looking at are the, the things that have been kind of on the outskirts of trendy for the last couple of years. And this year, experts are really predicting that these are the items and these are the the things that are really going to take hold in our homes in either design or decor or like uh, flooring or cabinetry or things like that. So now that we have that defined, let me ask you a very, very important question. Did you know there can be more than one color of the year? I didn't know that. So when I first Googled color of the year last year, the first thing that came up with was Benjamin Moore. As it turns out, pretty much every paint manufacturer and country has their own color of the year. So that in researching that, that was, that was really interesting that there are just so many colors of the year. The one that people go to the most for marketing, uh, uh, you know, just kind of across the board is the Pantone color of the year. So for 2021, Pantone went with two colors. They're using illuminating, which is a yellow, and maybe something that foresees 2021 being brighter, that encourages a little bit more um, brightness in our future. And then coupled with that, they're also doing what they're calling ultimate gray, which is the first super, super neutral color that Pantone has ever used as a color of the year. Um, mixed together, those two are actually very pretty. Then we get into some of the paint manufacturers. Benjamin Moore went with a color that is uh, more trending towards wellness and is very reminiscent of self-care and um, earthiness and things like that. And that one is called a G and teal. So it's kind of a mix between the blues and the greens. Um, very, I don't want to say warm. It's not really in the warm tones of colors. It's more in the cool tones of colors, but it's a very pretty color and just something that really um, exudes uh, wellness and taking care of yourself and, um, taking care of your environment and things like that. So a and teal is Benjamin Moore's color of the year. And then we come to Sherwin Williams, which went in a totally different direction for their color of the year. And theirs for 2021 is called Urbane Bronze. So this is kind of an interesting color. It's leaning towards black, but with all these grays and browns in it. So not a super bronzy color, kind of a super dark bronze color. And finally then we've got Bear, which just, they said, screw it, and they went with an entire color palette of 12 different colors for their colors of the year. So this is this is what they've got in, you know, you can see they range in from the whites all the way through oranges, but they they all tend to be on, on that earth tone range, which is something that we'll also see as one of the trends that's emerging. 
Now down below, I will, uh, Better Homes and Gardens did an entire article of like the 15 different colors of the year trends. So I will link to that down below. And if you want to take a look at their article, it's much more comprehensive than what I'm going to do here. So we just talked about Ben, uh, not Benjamin Moore, Bear doing their entire color palette and doing uh, like the earth tones. And that's something that we're seeing trending a lot this year also. Natural fab, fab, blah, 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 blah. natural fabrics and earth tones in paint colors uh, and in cushion colors and things like that. So uh, kind of going earthy and natural. Now on the completely opposite spectrum of that, then we have something that people are calling grand millennialism. Try saying that one three times fast and also try writing that one. That was interesting. So grand millennialism is a combination of your grandma style and your millennial style. And what we've seen is that millennials are really doing a huge throwback to the design features that they found in their grandparents' house and their great grandparents' house. So that's where we get the grand millennialism from. Uh, they're doing florals and we're seeing this in fashion also. Uh, so we're seeing a lot of ruffles and a lot of kind of lacy, uh, kind of the long dresses and uh, ruffles and short roughly sleeves and um, floral prints and stuff like that. So there, we're seeing a lot of the same kind of thing in their homes as well the floral prints and the ruffles and and kind of a throwback to some of the older style um, knickknacks on their tables and things like that kind of vintage furnitures all of that so we've got the the grand millennialism going on which is a kind of a very different from the earth tones and the natural fab fab, fab fabrics. I can't, I can say the word. I don't know why I can't spit it out today. So with the pandemic coming on the scene last year, we've seen um, a lot of our design trends and our decor trends really reflecting the change in lifestyles that people have had because of that. And one of those is the use of indoor plants or a greater use of indoor plants. So people are bringing that greenery from the outdoors inside. Those of us who live in areas where we can still go outside quite a bit, where we are not restricted to be inside our homes. I know a lot of the European countries, like they can only go outside for an hour a day um, to walk their dog, things like that. Uh, those of us who are living like here in Florida, where we're still out exercising and walking on the beach and doing a whole lot of stuff is we're not as needing of greenery in our indoor spaces, but I can imagine people who are on severe lockdowns do need that or people who can't get outside because they live in condominiums. They don't live in places where they can spend a whole lot of time outside. So we're seeing that they're bringing that greenery into their houses with indoor plants. Along the same lines, then we're seeing outdoor spaces, no matter how big or how small they are, really being utilized in a multifunctional manner. So patios are also gardens now. Um, that's really the only thing I can think of. <laughs> but I, we've seen that a lot. People are doing a lot more gardening and trying to grow their own plants a little bit more so that they don't have to be in the grocery store. And some people are worried about the supply chain with vegetables and with fresh produce. So a lot more people are gardening and, and building their own gardens. And we're seeing that with uh, like a patio space, but then maybe a gravel space with raised garden beds and stuff like that. I did that in my own yard with, uh, I'm building a food forest. So I have a couple of raised beds, which is how I started, but then the rest of my space is uh, a food forest that is in the very beginning stages and will somewhere along the line be very, very built out and be able to produce quite a bit of food for me and my family and the community. Besides outdoor multifunctional spaces, then we're finding indoor multifunctional spaces. Not a surprise, so many people 
ended up working from home and then the schools were closed and they were homeschooling as well and people all of a sudden went, oh shoot, <laughs> I need a living room and a dining room and an office and a home and a classroom. And so that prompted some people to look for different housing, to look for a bigger house, to look for housing with bonus rooms and things like that. But it's also led people to look at the spaces that they have and utilize them in multiple ways. So maybe a dining room is also a classroom or maybe a family room that was used just for TV time or for hanging out together is also, uh, you know, a corner of it is a home office and it's also a classroom and maybe there are some desks in there somewhere, um, things like that. So indoor spaces are also becoming multifunctional. And then along those same lines, then we've got things to help create multifunctional rooms, such as room dividers. If you have a space where you need an office and you have a classroom, you might want to put up some kind of a room divider between those two spaces to keep them separate. Or maybe you want to put up a room divider between your office that also happens to be in your, you know, in a corner of your family room so that you can be back there kind of a little bit quote unquote private. And also when you're not working and you're in your family room for family time, you're not really looking at the pile of stuff that's sitting on your desk, which is always nice. So room dividers are something that people are really looking at and utilizing in many different ways to create multifunctional rooms. Of course, we expect a lot of the flooring trends to remain the same. So plank tile flooring. These are things that we see in Florida. I'm not sure if you're seeing those around the country as well, but in, we use a lot of tile floors in Florida and not as much carpet. Carpet holds a whole lot of sand, so we tend not to use carpet as much. It also is warmer, which is nice in the winter, but not so nice in the summer. And you come in and you're dripping wet from rain or from the pool or from the beach or whatever else, and it's carpet just isn't a good thing in Florida. So we use a lot of tile floors here and our, we've, we've seen for a couple of years now the, the plank tile flooring, particularly in shades of gray. Uh, that's something that we expect to continue seeing in 2021. With the gray floors, the, we, we've seen a lot of gray walls, gray backsplashes, gray counters. Uh, or white in the kitchens with the gray floors and the gray backsplashes so the white counters and white um, cabinets. And they're forecasting that in 2021, we're going to start seeing the all white interiors fade back into obscurity and see color come back into uh, the kitchens and particularly into cabinets. So really bold colored cabinets. I don't mean bold as an orange or bright red, but bold as in dark greens, dark blues, navies, things like that, maybe a dark gray, but gray seems to be fading away a little bit as well. Other things that are being replaced that we're seeing being replaced, um, for instance, rolls, ro rolls, rose gold was trendy and is again, fading into obscurity. Thank God. <laughs> and we're seeing brasses and bronze uh, fixtures replacing those. So if you had rose gold cabinet pools or faucets or furniture, you might want to consider replacing that with brasses or bronzes. Other things that are saying bye-bye to a lot in a lot of places, uh, the barn door trend is starting to fade away. Not really sure how I feel about that. I think in some cases, barn doors look really nice, but in some cases, not so much. So barn doors are being replaced by pocket doors and by French doors. And again, I don't know how I feel about that. French doors inside a house, man, it's gotta be a big house. Barn doors were nice because you could kind of put up a barn door somewhere where you didn't have a whole lot of space. French doors aren't going to work quite that well. Pocket doors, I have always disliked pocket doors. <laughs> pocket doors are a pain. If they break on the inside, oh my goodness, you've just got a hassle on your hands. 
Uh, however, they're expecting that barn doors are going to fade away and be replaced with French doors and with pocket doors. So, you know, kind of hopefully not. The other one is shiplap. So shiplap on the walls, you know, wood paneling, not the vertical wood paneling of the 1970s, but the horizontal white wood paneling, shiplap. Shiplap is being replaced with more natural stuff. Again, we go back to the natural fabrics and the natural materials and the earth tones. So uh, being replaced with things like stone, which is real pretty, or maybe a stone type paint job on the walls, something that, that kind of brings in that old world stone look um, into the inside of your house. Other things that are replacing shiplap are metals. Interesting. Not sure how I feel about that one. So you might see metals on walls, like covering the wall, like an accent wall made out of metal. Again, interesting. Accent walls themselves painted a bold color that's different than the other three walls of a room are not as popular anymore. Um, but what is trending a little bit more is taking like an alcove or uh, some small part of a wall and accenting that with wallpaper, which could be pretty, I suppose. Mm -hmm. As far as wallpapers, you want to stick with linen type wallpapers or fabric wallpapers, not that old vinyl wallpaper that we saw in the 80s. And finally, for all of you guys who do not have matching furniture, rejoice because matching furniture, if you're all matchy matchy, Eh, that's not good anymore. You don't want to be matchy-matchy in your house. You want to have, uh, I think we always called it eclectic, but so eclectic is uh, making a comeback. So no more matchy-matchy, no more going to rooms to go and getting the entire bedroom set that's the same wood headboard with the same wood dresser with the same wood nightstands. Uh, no, get them from different places. Uh, again, going back to vintage, you might want to look at getting some vintage furniture to pop into different places into your home decorating and bring about that whole vintage feel, grand millennialism with uh, a little bit of the unmatchy matchy furniture. There you have it. Some of the design and home decor trends for 2021. What do you think? Do you agree with these? Do you not agree with these? Do you like these? Do you hate these? Which ones do you love and hate? Let me know in the comments below. Give us a thumbs up, share this out to your social media. It would really help the channel a lot. And please go ahead and subscribe to the channel. Really appreciate that. Thanks so much for watching and for being here. Have yourselves a fantastic day.